Hi, my name is Lisa Nguyen, and I will be talking about the Split Horn documentary. So the Split Horn documentary talks about Hmong culture and, and specifically Paja's family and their transition from living in Asia to moving to the America. So back then, Hmong people lived in villages all around Asia. So there were some in China and there were some along in Vietnam. And around the 1960s, the Vietnam War happened. And during that time, many Hmong villages were bombed, including Pajaz. So afterwards, many Hmong people went to refugee camps to live. And afterwards, um, tried to find like different ways to start a new life and like find a new place to live and call home. And Pajaz family, in most cases, most fam most people, they had um, someone sponsor them to move to the United States. So Paja had his cousin sponsor his family so they could move to Appleton, Wisconsin. And that's where Paja's family um, relocated and stayed and started um, the Hmong culture or the Hmong life there. So, Tagar and Jim had met Paja and had created the documentary on him. And within from 1996 to 2001, they had visited um, Paja two to three times every year in Wisconsin to see the differences and the changes within the culture and the context of how it's been integrated within American culture. And when the documentary was created, there were two versions of this. So the first version was in English, and then the second version was in the Hmong language. And it was actually translated by um, Paja's youngest daughter. So she was the reason that there was a second um, version for um, Hmong people to understand, just in case, because there was a lot of language barriers and um, mis- interpretation problems because it was kind of confusing the way they would um, interact with each other because they weren't really used to the other one's um, behaviors or like the other one's um, environmental situation in a way. So Hmong culture. Hmong people believed around souls. So everyone had like several souls that would guide them around um, and keep them healthy and safe. So shamans are a big part of Hmong culture because shamans are the ones that help guide the souls in case if any gets lost. When people start like getting bad health or having some problems, they would believe that it's because they lost a soul or a soul has gone missing. So then they would call for a shaman to do a ritual to help find the soul or to help um, get the soul back in some cases. And in other cases, they perform rituals just to think and to make sure um, the souls stay and to the souls um, don't like end up leaving. And in rituals, um, in rituals, Hmong people have shamans, and Paja was the shaman around um, Appleton, where he lived. So he was like the neighborly shaman for people around him, and he would go around and do rituals for people when needed. Um, and he would, there would also be some cases funeral rituals. So when someone dies in a family, there is a ritual for around three days and three nights to make sure um, the soul of the deceased has passed on and met the ancestors and they don't come back to haunt the families in the future. So the shamans are an important part of Hmong people and they're the ones that help um, keep the Hmong people safe or in their beliefs. And the rituals also show you that um, Hmong people are on like polychronic time. 
because the rituals don't have a certain time frame that have to be finished. When the ritual is finished, it will be finished. Like sometimes it could take 15 minutes, sometimes it could take 30 minutes. It depends on when the soul has come back or it depends on when um, the ritual has finished, like when everything has succeeded. And it also shows you how the idea that their lives are around collectivism because they aren't idealistic. They think more around the groups and their families together and how to keep each other healthy and making sure everyone does a part of everything instead of making sure every, everyone has their things for themselves. And when doing the rituals, there's also the appearance of the shaman. The shaman has certain clothing and garbs they have to wear. And in Paja's case, because he had a lot of children, his children would help him um, set up the ritual tables and set up um, the ritual um, baskets or like the setting. And they would also help um, Paja within the ritual. So while he's doing the dance they will like ring the bell or they will help do this and that within the settings and then when moving to the United States they also had a lot of language barriers because Hmong people have a very different language and they use symbols in more instead of letters so when learning letters it got really confusing because they weren't ever used to it. So it was like a new language. It was like an alien concept to them in a way. So it made them, their communication apprehension a bit low. So most of the time when they were speaking, they would have a low load conversation and it would make it hard for them to understand a lot or to be able to comprehend the situation a lot better. And within those times, it can cause misinterpretation and cause people to have um, certain stereotypes after because they would have problems understanding. So they would misinterpret it, what the Hmong people were saying and cause a um, miscommunication and just blow it out of proportions in ways. And then Another important thing was when Hmong people moved here because the language barriers, they weren't even sure if practicing their culture was fine. Because when doing rituals, it can be very loud. And when doing rituals, sometimes they would kill an animal to um, sacrifice it, to thank it. Or um, in other cases, in some rituals, for example, when a woman is to get married, the um, man that wants to marry her has to kidnap her. So this could cause a huge misunderstanding and American people could see it as kidnapping when Hmong people just see it as her getting married or as a ritual for her to be able to get married happily and um, well. So it can cause a lot of problems within the thoughts and the um, ideas. Okay, so then within like learning about the two cultures, balancing it is also a big aspect because Baja was born in Asia and lived there and then moved to America while his children were more born and raised in America. So that causes their um, ideology, idea, ideas to be a lot different from Paja because they have a different mindset because they've lived in, in the American lifestyle. So they've gotten used to that culture instead of um, the Hmong culture. And within Paja's family, most of his children convert to Christianity or um, Catholicism because that's what their um, spouse or their um, wife or husband believe in. So they convert just because of their um, 
other beliefs or because the American way, because they are also, they don't agree with Pajah's um, teachings sometimes because they have different mindsets on certain things. So that could cause misinterpretation and um, miscommunication. And then the traditions and practices could be lost within this when they switch to Christianity. Because in the documentary, when their children switched to Christianity, they lost basically their homon culture. They didn't really talk about it or they didn't practice it at all. So they basically forgot it. And when it's forgotten, it's gonna be lost and it won't ever be found again. So basically you're losing a chunk of yourself when you're doing this. And in the end though, they were able to understand the differences and to understand how um, important Hmong culture is because they were able to see that through their dad. And their dad had showed them a lot through the ideas of how Hmong culture was important to him and how it affected the people around them. And the children had to learn to balance the two cultures at the same time and within the different environments and contexts.